Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be working in my bullet journal again. Uh, if you're into bullet journaling, that's absolutely brilliant. And if you're not, then I hope there are some fun art techniques that uh, you can get from this video. I'm going to be showing you how to draw a five pointed star because I'm going to be using that as the feature on my cover page in my journal. And, uh, and then I'm going to be breaking up that geometry by introducing some flowers and leaves. So I'm going to be doing my cover page for November uh, and I thought I'd add a little bit of colour so I've got my acrylograph pens out again and uh, yeah I'm going to do a negative space theme but I'm going to do a five pointed star uh, with the little N inside it. Um, so uh, before I do that I'm going to show you a couple of techniques for drawing a five pointed star and then I'm going to draw one in my in my book here. There are a couple of different methods and they depend on the equipment that you have to hand. So each of them is going to use a ruler and uh, a pencil. But for one of them, I'm going to use a pair of compasses. And for the other, I'm going to use a protractor. Yeah, did you know I did a maths degree? This is about the only use it gets these days. So to start with, uh, the protractor I find the simplest method. Uh, I'm going to start by dividing my page into half and join a vertical line halfway down the page, like that. And then each circle has 360 degrees. 360 divided by 5 is 72. So all I need to do is to find increments of 72 degrees. So I'm going to make sure that my line is nicely lined up and I'm going to mark 72. And then I can join that line up with the center like that. And then I can find 72 degrees from that line. Making sure the center is on the center point there we go. Show you that a bit more closely. So I'm lining this up with a zero and the center point, and then I'll mark 72. And then draw a line through that point and the center. One more. Now I can measure out the same distance along each of those lines and find my point, or I can draw a circle with the center, right at the center there. And there I've got a circle divided into 10 and I just need to connect every other point. One, two, three, one, two, three, join that one to this one. That one to the top. And there's my five pointed star. Now, the reason that I put the lines in all the way is because I quite like a fat star. So if I use that line and I can measure out a point a centimeter out, then I can join each point to that extra line like that. So there's my nice fat star. For the second technique, you need a pair of compasses and I've got some fancy ones, but any will do. And you open them up to 
a size, doesn't really matter what it is, whatever size you want your star to be, and you draw a circle. Now if you keep your compasses the same size, you can put your uh, point of the compass anywhere on the circumference and mark around and get six uh, divisions all around the circle, and that's how you divide your circle into six. But we want to divide the circle into five, and there's a really cool trick for how to do this. Um, I found this on a YouTube channel by Samira Mian. And she does amazing Islamic art. Um, it's stunningly beautiful, and I recommend you go and check her out. I'll put a link below. And uh, what you need to do is, first of all, we're going to divide the circle in half. So a line right through the centre. And then without changing the width of our compasses, I'm going to mark this point right here and draw those two divisions in for a sixth of the circle. Let's join those two together. And we get a vertical line running up and down through the circle. I also want a vertical line through the centre of the circle. And it has to be exact. So again, I'm putting my point in that little hole that I made there. And I'm making the compasses wider, wider than half of my circle. Make, that means I can make an, an arc down here and up here. And then I can find the other side of that circle and make the corresponding marks there and there. And now I can join those two points together and it should run right through that centre point of the circle. Now I need to find this point here and this point here. So I need to find the distance between the two. And I can do that with my compasses. So I'll put the point exactly on there. And then move them until I found that exact distance there. And then I mark that on the centre line. And now I need to find the distance between this top point here and this point down here that I've just made. So let's do that. Make sure it's exact. And now if everything's gone right, this should be a fifth of the circle. And I can mark off here and here. and here and here and then that distance should be exactly the same so I've got now one two three four five points that are equally distant around the outside of the circle and I just have to join those up in the same way and make my five-pointed star. So I'm going to draw my fat five-pointed star onto the page here. So now I want to draw my N in the centre of here. So I want this based on like a rectangle or a square. So four up, four out. Four down. I'm just using the dots on here as the guide for sketching it in. So it's a very simple block N. Now I'm going to take my rubber and rub out any of these guidelines. So I'm going to go sh through and make sure that I get any of the guidelines out completely. And then the uh, 
the lines for the outline of the letter and for the star. I'm going to make a lot fainter. I'll go over them with the rubber, but I won't press too hard because I don't want to get rid of them completely because I want to still be able to see roughly where they are. So I've decided to work on a floral theme today. When I started this bullet journal, I said I wasn't going to use any florals at all. It was all going to be abstract. And then I changed my mind. I did some in September, which I really enjoyed. I think I've avoided it because there's a kind of a stigma around women artists and florals and it can be a rut that you can get stuck in and then not be taken seriously as an artist. So I've kind of wanted to avoid it for that. But for something like this, why would I why would I avoid that? I'm not expecting this to be taken seriously as a work of art. And then not to take seriously artists who are doing floral illustrations and paintings is actually to do a disservice to um, some very fine artists. So I need to look at my uh, prejudices again, I think. So what I'm doing here is drawing up to the letter, but not through it. So wherever I get to where the letter is, I'm just going to leave a little gap and just imagine the rest of the, the drawing goes through there, but not actually draw it. I don't have a plan for what particular florals I'm going to do here. I'm just starting with one colour and then I'm going to see what looks next, what looks good next. So I'm doing these little stems in green and then I think I'll put some flowers on the tops of these stems. So I'm placing the stems all in different directions and I'm trying to make sure that I I have them kind of filling the star. So I want to make sure that um, things kind of go up to the edge because that's going to make it look, um, yeah, it's going to make the shape look really obvious. So where I can, I try and draw things up to the edge of my pencil lines. And whereas with the the end in the middle, I'm kind of cutting off leaves and uh, stems and things halfway. I don't really want to do that on the edge. I want to kind of have the edge of the star look more natural. So I won't have any kind of half leaves there. So I might have to squeeze a few in um, to make them kind of look natural. Do a couple of smaller ones. But uh, but yeah, but then the the ones that are going through the end just kind of disappear like they're disappearing underneath it. I really like this burgundy colour. I think it's one of the nicer colours from this set of pens. I love this mustard colour as well but um, find it a little bit patchy, so I have to go over it a couple of times. Now I'm getting to the point where I've filled in most of the space, but I still want to make the edges of the, the star and the end look really obvious, so I need to add some little elements in to fill in all of the gaps, and then that'll make those uh, shapes uh, yeah, appear really clear. So I'm just going around with some different colours and adding in some different flowers and leaves in different sizes, kind of going smaller as I go along. And at this point I stop filling in gaps and just start brazenly overlapping things. I think these, because these are paint pens, you can draw one over the top of another and they do layer quite nicely. And then I just go through and add more and more and more and more detail. So 
So I'm going to make a calendar page on here. I'm going to be very generous with it and spread it over two pages, which isn't what I normally do. I normally do a very small one. But for some reason this month I fancied doing a bigger one. So that's what I'm doing. And um, yeah, I'm going to draw in the basic structure and then I'll see what decoration I want to put into it. So I decide that for the, uh, the whole layout this month, I'm going to use the Acrylograph pens. I'm not going to use any of my fine liners, although I will use them for adding in, you know, the tasks and the to do's and things like that. I wanted to see what it would look like if I used the paint pens for all of the, um, the technical bits, not just the decorative ones, but the, the boxes and lines and dates and all of those kind of things. And then for decoration on this page, I'd blocked out November in very, very simple block letters. And I just decided that I would follow on the theme that I'd used on the, the first page and just fill those in randomly with different styles of stems and, and little flowers. And, uh, and as I keep going and, and filling the letters, uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to read quite clearly what it says and adding in little flowers and dots and, uh, and little details and things like that. Um, it not only helps it look more full and decorative, but I think it helps kind of fill out the letters as well. So it makes more obvious what they are. So it's a calendar. It needs days of the week and days of the month, things like that. And then for my weekly pages this month, I'm drawing a box for each day of the week and giving it a label and a number. And then I like to have a little notes section or a, an extra to do list for things that, uh, you know, don't have to happen on one particular day. And then I decide to do a kind of a, a header decorative a strip that uh, uses one of my kind of foliage uh, designs uh, for each week. So for this particular week, I'm using these red branching leaves. And I'm going all the way along the page with this. And then because I always have to add detail to everything, these get a little line down the centre in a nice pale pink and some yellow dots that could be berries or small flowers or just a decorative detail. I think there's something about this that when it's finished, it reminds me of like a maybe a William Morris pattern or something like that. Um, and I, I really quite like that. So thanks very much for watching today. I really hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, then please give it a like. And uh, if you'd like to see more, then please subscribe. If you do any work inspired by uh, what I've done today, then I love to see what you make. Um, I'm on Instagram and you can always tag me there at Lou Rachel Davis. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you in another video. Thanks very much. Bye bye.